In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Y bus admittance matrix for solving power flow problems or power flow equations. Now we're going to take a closer look at constructing the Y bus matrix and understand exactly what all of the elements actually mean from an intuitive perspective. This is part one. The Y bus admittance matrix is best understood through an example. So we're going to set up for an example and kind of talk through this entire process. Okay, so suppose that we have bus one and we'll label it bus one right here. Okay, now this bus one, let's just say that bus one had some sort of generator that was connected to it. Okay, and there was a transmission line that connected bus one to bus two. So let me draw this a little bit better. Okay, so the transmission line that connects bus one to bus two has some sort of impedance to it. And impedance is modeled by Z. Now impedance is equal to, there's a resistive component of an impedance, plus there's a reactance component of an impedance, okay? So we're gonna model this impedance by this square box, okay? So let's color that in. So let's just say that Z is equal to J 0 0.4, okay? We're saying that there's no resistive component here. So there's no resistive component, it's all reactive components. And keep in mind that this is just an example. So the admittance of this transmission line is equal to y, right? And y is equal to 1 over z. So this is the admittance. So that's the admittance. And this is the impedance. So the admittance is equal to 1 over z. That is equal to 1 over j 0 0.4. And if you calculate that, that is equal to negative j 2.5 now if you're having a hard time understanding these equations that's all right now there's another video that was done that really got into the actual power flow equations and the link to this particular tutorial where we talk about all of these terminologies and can be found at the bottom of this particular video because admittance equals 1 over z the admittance of this transmission line then becomes y is equal negative j 2.5 that is pretty well understood right so let's clean this up a little bit okay and then uh let's make this stuff a little bit smaller let's also say that this transmission line was a medium length transmission line right so now this medium length transmission line also has this term called shunt admittance. And all this means is that since this is a medium length transmission line, we have to consider the shunt admittance of this line and which we will by simply, we'll just zoom in here. So there's a shunt admittance at two points on the left side and the other on the right side, okay? So we have to model this shunt admittance, which we will by this yellow um, box or rectangle. Uh, let's say that the value of this shunt admittance for this particular branch was equal to J 0 0.05. And then same thing over here, J0 point, make this guy a little bit smaller. Okay, and we're now gonna zoom back out. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's add another bus. So let's say that we had bus number three. Okay, and um, there was a transmission line that connected bus one to bus three. So let's draw that over here. And for the sake of aesthetics, let's just clean this up a little bit. Let's just move this here and move that there. So now, just like the impedance that was given for the transmission line between bus 1 and bus 2, uh, there's also an impedance that's given between the transmission line for bus 1 and bus 3. So let's model that here. So let's say that the impedance that was given that impedance is equal to 0 0.25. Now, because impedance is equal to 0 0.25, we know that admittance is gonna equal one over the impedance, and that's going to equal one over J 0 0.25. And we know clearly that that is negative J 
zero. We know that y, which is the admittance, is equal to negative j4.0. So let's now clean this up a little bit. Okay, so um, just like this particular transmission line, let's just assume that the transmission line that spans bus 1 and bus 3 was also a medium length transmission line. So let's model the shunt admittance that were for this transmission line. So we're going to zoom in. Uh, we're going to call this particular admittance at this line is equal to j uh, zero point. So let's zoom in. We're going to say that this is equal to j zero point zero two. And then we're just simply going to copy that admittance on the other end and that admittance is also this value j 0.02 okay so um, okay so we're looking pretty good now uh, and lastly let's just say that bus 2 had some sort of load that was associated to it and then same thing with bus 3 this will represent our load Okay, and the last thing is, is that um, we're going to assign some voltage values here. So this is the magnitude of voltage one, and this is the angle of voltage one, and this is a tilde. So similarly, we're gonna have the magnitude of voltage two defined like that, and then tilde two is the angle of, volta of the voltage. And then same thing over here. And then to complete part one, we're just going to write out our matrix. So Y bus is that's going to equal. So Y11 represents the admittance for bus one. Y12 represents the admittance between bus one and bus two. Y13 represents the admittance between bus one and bus three. Similarly, Y21 represents the admittance between bus two and bus one. Y22 is the admittance for bus 2. Uh, Y23 is the admittance between bus 2 and 3. And as you can see, bus 2 and 3 doesn't have any admittance associated to it. So that value is going to equal 0. But uh, we'll cover that in part 2. And then Y31, Y32, and Y33. So this entire thing is a matrix, okay? Okay, so this video now concludes part one. This video was brought to you by generalpack.com, making power systems intuitive. Visit this website for more power system tutorials. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please do so by clicking on the forum link that's found at the bottom of this screen. The forum is a platform to ask more detailed questions and have the community respond to those questions. So if you have any questions about this stuff, click on the link to the forum and ask away. Now, if you haven't already, please go ahead and click on the bottom right corner of this screen. There should be a subscribe button. Subscribe to this channel to be connected to more power systems video tutorials. Thank you.